Welcome back to the Pretty L Podcast. I'm Candace. I'm Nishambia. And I'm Sabrina. And tonight we have a wonderful and special guest here with us to celebrate and kick off Black History Month. Tonight's guest is one of the most important voices in race relations, Black history, and culturally relevant topics. He hails from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he is a doctor of clinical psychology. He's a published author, as well as a public speaker. And the founder of and the founder. FDMG. Let's, let's, yes. let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So we're close. We're here. We have the school. Tell us more about the school. Well, hopefully, uh, God willing, I don't even want to say hopefully, um, this spring we'll be having our community grand opening Uh celebration for the first school in American history to be completely purchased, renovated and operated with donations from African people from every continent in the world. Uh, This has never happened before in our 404 plus year history in this country. Absolutely. Never before has a school been a traditional school building, authentic school, not Mm -hmm. a storefront, not a church, not a not a not not nothing other than a real school. Never before has have we had a school in this country that was built with the financial support from African people from all over the world independently without any handouts, loans, donations, grants from non-African people. It's the first time it's ever been done in American history. So we're very proud of that. Uh, We plan on opening up the school to our young people next year. So this year will be the grand opening. Mm -hmm. This spring will be the grand opening for the community. And next summer of 2024 will be the grand opening for our young people. That's when we will actually start school on September the 3rd, 2024, our second, third, and fourth grade academies. And that happens to be the anniversary date of Frederick Douglass's escape from slavery awesome. in Baltimore through Wilmington, Delaware, Absolutely. on up to my birth city of Philadelphia. Absolutely. Congratulations. Um, so can you explain to us, I know I've heard you talk about independent schools versus charter schools. So when you say it's fully funded, explain to everyone what you mean when you say that. What's the difference between independent schools versus a charter school? Independent schools have an independent source of revenue. Uh Uh, A private school, by definition, is an academy that is operated by a corporation or by some organization or association or business who decides to create a school to serve whatever function that they see fit. So if Walmart opens up a school, that's a private school. Mm -hmm. It's privately owned by a corporation, right? If a fraternity or sorority opens up a school, that's a private school. Mm -hmm. So when we think of a private school, we're thinking of a school that's receiving its funds from some sort of a charity, a company, a a business, a, a social organization. Whenever you hear the word private, that normally means it's being funded by somebody with deep pockets. McDonald's opens up a school. That's a private school. You know, if um, one of the sororities opened up a school, that would be a private school because the funding is coming from another source. Independent means there is no outside source or funder that's controlling the uh, operation or destination of that school. Uh So if Walmart opens up a school, if Walmart goes out of business, the school goes out of business because it's Walmart school. Right. But when you are an independent school, that means that the school is largely being funded by independent citizens, independent people Uh who hold this mission near and dear to their heart and want to see it through. Mm-hmm. So public schools are ran by the state. Charter schools are also ran by the state. Mm-hmm. Charter schools are public schools. They're just alternative public schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only difference between a regular public school and a charter school, charter schools are given more control over how they develop their school plan, how they're going to educate their children, how they're going to operate mm-hmm. uh, their educational program. So charter schools have a bit more freedom Because what they're telling the state is, I can do this better than you. I can do this better than you. So the state is saying, if you can do this better than us, it's no need for us 
to be taking on this responsibility yeah. of educating all these children. Right. We have enough of them. Uh, so right. if we have people who can do a better job mm -hmm. than we can educating kids, let's give them the money and let them educate. But if you are a charter school and the state gives you that opportunity to prove you can teach them kids and do a better job mm -hmm. than the state, if you fail, your charter will it's be revoked. revoked and you will be put out of business. So, Dr. Umar, I have a question for you. In regards to um, the charter schools, the school districts are the ones that cover the cost of salaries and things of that nature. Is that correct? What happens with a charter school, if you two ladies opened up a charter school, hypothetically, mm -hmm. and I would hope you would open up an independent school and not a mm -hmm. charter. But anyway, if you opened up a charter school, let's say you have 100 kids, students, coming from the local middle school. You're going to have a charter middle school. You got 100 students coming on over. The money that that school received for those 100 students mm -hmm. will simply be transferred to you. The school district would charge you sometimes a fee, a processing fee to transfer that money out of their account over to your charter school. So the benefit of the charter school financially is you don't have to worry about funding. The money that the child would have gotten at their regular public right. school automatically comes over to the charter school. Now, here's where public schools have issue with charter schools. Mm -hmm. You guys are operating a charter school. You just took 100 kids from us. So obviously we're losing money, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But the other issue is, let's say that your student count goes into the district and the state in November. Let's say they disperse the money November 15th. Let's just mm -hmm. say November 15th, that's when the money comes out. All the money for the whole year per child, November the 15th, right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. December the 1st, you decide to expel five of those children. December the 1st, you tell those parents that we don't think your son or daughter is working out here. They should go back to the local public school. Mm -hmm. Now the public school is really angry at you okay. because you just took $15,000, $10,000 per child from us. And after you got the money, you had the audacity to send 50 of them back and you don't send the money back when they come back. Oh, wow. Okay. Do y'all see how that works? I, I Absolutely. See how it works. And yes. that's why public schools have a gripe with charter schools because to be honest with you, as a former charter school assistant principal and principal, mm -hmm. it is kind of unfair somewhat because charter schools do have control over their student population to an extent. Public schools have no control. So what I've seen charter schools do to improve their reputation mm -hmm. and test scores, they find the high achieving students. Mm -hmm. They find the really low achieving students. And those bottom 25 or 50 or 100 low achieving students, they find ways to get them out of their school. Oh. And one of the best ways to get the low achieving students out of your school is to wait for them to get into some trouble and tell the parents it's not working out here. They have to go back, but you've already taken the money for that student from the local public school, okay? And now you go to your waiting list and you pull students from your waiting list with high test scores. Mm -hmm. And so now you're lying to the newspaper telling them that you've been raising reading and math scores every year you've been open. And mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is you haven't raised anything. All you did right. was gentrify your original student population mm -hmm. and bring in high achieving students from your waiting lists. Wow. Mm -hmm. but the I fabrication of success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so both public and charter is probably the same mission. It's the same mission. Um, and basically diagnosing our black boys with ADHD. And is it the same kind of mission in the same, both schools? Are you dealing with, we dealing with the same thing? Well, by definition, mm -hmm. each charter school is its own school district. Okay. By definition. With that being said, and the same holds true for public schools as well, we have to judge them by their individual merit. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Okay. 
You go to Philadelphia, and we have more charter schools than any city in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're also the pioneering city for black charter schools. Mm -hmm. But you come into Philadelphia, you have, I don't know, probably 100 charter schools. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to be great. Some of them are going to be horrible. Some of them are going to be the same as the public schools. This holds true wherever you are. Gotcha. You really have to study charter school by charter school to see if they are good. Now, if you ask me my general opinion, as someone who's been in this field for over 20 years, tested thousands of children, have has done work in public school districts across the country, I would tell you that most charter schools are just as bad as the public schools. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Some of them are much better. Most of them are the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason I would tell you that is because a lot of charter schools are open not to educate children. Mm -hmm. Charter schools are open so people can build political power and influence in a particular city mm -hmm. and to also hire their friends, family mm -hmm. members, and pay themselves. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you start a new charter school, what city are you ladies in? We're in Baltimore City. Oh, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. That's right. I just saw you all in mm -hmm. Wednesday. Yeah. So let's take Baltimore. You open up a charter school in a depressed section of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to have at least 100 employees. You'll be able to hire your sorors, your frat brothers, your uncle to do the trash, your cousin to do right. the buses, your girlfriend. So it puts you in a very powerful position because you're giving people jobs. Jobs, right. And the reason politicians like charter schools is if I get a charter school opened in my district, Dr. Umar, the city councilman, the mayor, the governor, hope, the governor hopeful, I opened up a charter school in my congressional or, or gubernatorial district in Baltimore, your charter school got 500 kids in it. That's a thousand parents, mm -hmm. not including their grandmoms, their aunts, their uncles, their neighbors. Right. Those are guaranteed votes on election day. Wow. Those are guaranteed. The charter school is votes for the politician. Okay. Wow. Is members for the church. Mm -hmm. And it's political influence for the people who open them. Mm. So tell charter us. schools are rarely open to educate children. Gotcha. They're normally it's open for political yeah. reasons. It's a business. But it's a business. It's all about business. And most mm -hmm. charter schools in the black community are open by who? White people. White people, mm -hmm. absolutely. So you got to ask yourself: When do white people start loving black people so much? Right, that they will want to educate properly. Educate you have yes, yes. You've opened up most of the charter schools in Black America in the inner city are open by white people. Do you really believe they're doing this because they love our children? Absolutely not. Absolutely Political not. power, uh, elections, and also gentrification. Ladies, I almost forgot one of the biggest reasons. Right. Yes. The right. charter school is the face of gentrification. Yeah. Philadelphia leads the country in gentrification. We have the most charter schools. Mm -hmm. We have the highest black homelessness rate. Those three things go together. Mm -hmm. Gentrification, charter schools, homelessness. How so? There's a certain section of Baltimore white people want to take back. They want Absolutely. the blacks out. They want to take it back. Yeah. They can't strong arm it because it's a very conscious, cultural, historical section. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to do is they're going to find some Negroes in Baltimore to front the charter school operation to the community to make it look like it's for us. Mm -hmm. And since black people don't do no research, when right. Dr. Umar runs around saying that the Marcus Garvey charter school is for black kids, everybody's happy. Right. And then when your child shows up to school at the Marcus Garvey charter school in Baltimore, you notice most of the staff are white. White. Yes. The administrators mm -hmm. are white. Yes. The employees are white. Correct. And guess what? They're moving into that same neighborhood in Baltimore, buying right. up the homes, buying up the businesses, yeah. buying up the properties, raising the tax value. And after five or 10 years, none of the black people who originally sent their kids to the charter school oh, can, can afford, afford to live in that neighborhood Correct. anymore. Yes. And so what you thought was the Marcus Garvey charter school was the Adolf Hitler charter school. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, both Sabrina and I have sons, and we both dealt with the attack on them. Uh, we and uh, we started, started very yeah, early. Yeah, it started very kindergarten. early. Kindergarten. And actually, I was first introduced to you when my son was starting kindergarten in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, my husband showed me a video that schools are the prisons, 
and the teachers are the police officers by you. But of course, my son was ahead. He was smart. I didn't believe it. And the day he started public school in kindergarten, everything you said was true. We saw um, it come to pass. We saw we saw it come to pass. Okay. Like, and my husband was sending me your videos. And of course, I was just like, mm, whatever. And everything you said came to pass. So we moved on to the independent schools. Mm -hmm. Both of us did the same thing. And that was a site. So the independent schools, it wasn't a behavior problem, but more a psychological war yeah. that we had to fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. The greatest expansion in independent schools in American history came between 1954 and 1974. Mm -hmm. That means it came between the Supreme Court desegregation decision of 54 mm -hmm. and special education in 75. Okay. When the Supreme Court said that the public schools must begin the process of desegregation, white people pulled their kids out. Yes. And they retreated into the suburbs and they started opening up all these private schools. America would not have as many private schools as she has if the Supreme Court did not order the public school districts of America to desegregate. The private school industry was created in response mm -hmm. to school desegregation. So Okay. And then in 1974, it slows down just a little bit because now... What happens when special education gets created, public law 94-142 by an act of Congress in 75, the government basically compromises with the white public schools. And they say, listen, we know you don't want these black children, mm -hmm. but you got to take them because that's the law. Right. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to let you segregate them after you let them in the school building. Yeah. So let them in. Let them in. Mm -hmm. Once they're in, say they can't learn as well. Mm -hmm. Say they got behavior problems. Mm -hmm. Say they got reading disabilities. Yeah. Say they're autistic. Yeah. Say they're intellectually disabled. Say whatever you got to say. Like get them, get them tested for special ed. Mm -hmm. Let the school psychologist put a label on them. And once the school psychologist puts the label on them, you can legally resegregate them again into special ed classes. Special education was the compromise. You can still segregate. Just don't say you're doing it for race. Say you're doing it for disability. And they there's more funding for special education as well. So there's like a that's almost like a win win for these schools. Because, oh, it's a double win. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You can segregate, and we're going to pay you. So I think for us, um, we were the generation of parents that we went to college. I was a um, first graduate of my family, college graduate. And we felt like the independent school would offer more opportunity for the children and, you know, isolate them from certain things that they would be exposed to in public school. However, the flip side was the racism was blatant. First of all, in the lower school where my son was, there were no Black educators at all. And I believe it's still that way to this day. And he's now in middle school, gone. And we've um, left that particular school. But it was like he could never really catch a break because every minute thing that he did, it was magnified. Well, the thing is, and it's not your fault. Mm hmm I mean, working in the schools, I try to get black parents to understand this. Just because that independent school or that suburban public school mm -hmm. has high test scores, mm -hmm. great programs, great learning environment, mm -hmm. great teachers, a lot of funding coming into the school because of racism. Yeah. Your child can be in the midst of all those privileges and opportunities mm -hmm. yeah. and experience none of them. None of it. Absolutely. Correct. I try to get parents to understand yeah. mm -hmm. your child can be in a class with 20 other white students mm -hmm. and still, even though he got the same teacher, yep. same classroom, mm -hmm. same textbooks, mm -hmm. same assignment, and he can still be subject to a segregated education. Absolutely. The way the teacher talks to him, the way the teacher interacts with him, mm -hmm. the way the teacher evaluates him, mm -hmm. the yep. way the teacher responds to him, 
even though he's in there with them, it's like he's in a glass box. Still. He's mm-hmm. still yep. mm-hmm. receiving a segregated education. And it was and always And with Black mothers, I must say. Let me say this point. Mm-hmm. With Black mothers, one of the additional challenges that I face as a certified school psychologist, I'm speaking as now, mm-hmm. as a certified school psychologist who evaluates for special education disabilities, mm-hmm. Black mothers... And the other big thing I do is behavior modification, functional behavioral assessment, and behavior planning. Black mothers give white mothers the benefit of the doubt a bit too much. I agree. You all assume because she's a mother mother. like you with children of her own Mm -hmm. that she's going to love your children the way she loves her own or at least respect your child as much as she will want somebody to respect her child. And you have to understand the black woman as the mother of civilization, you can love the white children and show no racism. A black teacher can love up on white children, Asian children, Latino children, Jewish children, Chinese children, and show no type of bigotry because you are the queen mother. Yes. White women can't do that. They cannot show a black child that unconditional love that a black woman can show a white child. And y'all tend to give the white woman too much rope. Y'all tend to give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And that benefit of the doubt is often the room that they need to end up academically lynching our boys. I, I agree. I know for me, the rope I gave them was believing that they had his best interests at hand. It was Absolutely. believing that what they were telling Absolutely. me was true. And do you know, when they asked us for to have him tested, of course, my husband was well-versed in Dr. Umar Johnson. He was like, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. was like, I'm looking at him. Like, we nearly got a divorce over this whole testing thing. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, no, but they're going to put him out. Because, of course, in the public school, he was a behavior problem. And I liked that he wasn't a behavior problem in the independent school. But I wasn't paying attention to the psychological yeah. until it was not too late. Because we took him out at fourth grade and began to home- homeschool him. But at that point, I, I really believed that they had his best interest. Because guess what? They were like, he's awesome. He's such a great kid. And I believed that they were honest. And I think that's another thing that Black women do. We be- and, and they can kind of like psychologically mess with our head and make us believe that our sons are not going to be successful. Like, and that's our biggest fear Mm -hmm. that our sons may not be successful. So when they pose that to us, we are like, Oh no, what should we do? Mm -hmm. See, there's four reasons. There's more than four, but I'm going to give you four reasons that white children by design Mm -hmm. outperform black children Mm -hmm. by design. Mm -hmm. Number one, most of the teachers look just like them yeah. and have their best interests at heart mm-hmm. by design. Mm-hmm. The curriculum is based on what is best for white people in this country mm-hmm. by design. Yeah, absolutely. The black children, by virtue of race, mm-hmm. are going to be trapped. They are going to be emotionally abused. Mm-hmm. They are going to be treated as inferior. They are going to have to fight through the psychological bob wire that makes it so difficult for black children to keep up with the white kids because they don't just have to learn. And this is where we get messed up as a black mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. Before the black child can learn, they have to be comfortable. In order to learn, you have to focus. In order to learn, Mm -hmm. you have to concentrate. In order to learn, you You have have to to attend. How can you do that when you have a teacher breathing down your neck, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. waiting Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. you to slip up at any second so they can suspend you or throw you out of the classroom because they don't like black people? Mm -hmm. And here's something I need black people to understand, especially black mothers. Absolutely. Because as you said, giving white female teachers the benefit of the doubt is probably 50 percent of the problem with public education. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the white teacher knows you're going to take her word over your own child. Absolutely. She knows it. Mm -hmm. She knows it because slavery taught us that white people can do no wrong. And that's still with us. 
Mm-hmm. Okay? Unfortunately, yes. Here's the thing. If black children were properly educated, they could challenge white children for political economic control of the United States. Mm -hmm. White women understand that the future of white supremacy is in their hands in the classroom. Mm. The white teacher knows this. We control who runs this society by who we properly educate and who we educate poorly. They know this. They have to make the black kids fail to protect opportunity for the white ones, period. So the question we got to ask is black people, why are we expecting white folks who have never practiced equality, have never practiced justice, Mm -hmm. have never believed in fair play with black people, why are we expecting them to educate our kids, ours, Mm-hmm. to take food out of the mouths of their own children. Mm-hmm. You know how many white educators I've heard say they don't evaluate mental giftedness? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. These white psychologists, white teachers, mm-hmm. white principals, I don't believe in mental giftedness. Wow. Mm-hmm. And you know what I've had to say on more than one occasion? You believe in mental giftedness. You don't believe in mental giftedness for black children. Absolutely. This is why our children don't get referred for MG because of the racism of white folks. Here's what I need black parents to understand. Help us. Racism does not break up black males into groups. Mm, Whether you are five years old in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Whether you are 15 Mm -hmm. in the 10th grade, whether you are 25 in grad school Mm -hmm. or 75 in the old folks home, all of you will be treated and punished like dangerous grown men. What the black mother needs to understand is black boys are not allowed to be children in the United States. Let me say it one more time. No. And then black they can share. boys are not allowed to be children yeah. in the United States. Why do you think you have so many preschool and kindergarten grade black boys being suspended and expelled from mm-hmm. school? I just dealt with three parents last week, three of them, three of them in a week, preschool, kindergarten, first and second grade expelled. One said he was going to shoot the teacher. He was only five years old. He ain't got no gun, can't get no gun. But because he told the snow bunny he was going to shoot her, guess what? She told the principal. She could have ignored it. She could have called the mom. She could have had a conversation. You know what she did? She used it to put a rope around his neck and lynching. He's expelled. Another kid said he was going to blow up the school. Where are he going to get a bomb at at three years old? Impossible. But guess what? It got him expelled. And then there was another one. Black boys are not allowed to be children. Why is this important? Because black mothers and fathers are not preparing their sons on how to navigate racism in school. Right. We don't tell them the truth. Mm-hmm. See, they see the white boy say he's going to blow up the school. Nothing happens. They see the white boy say he's going to shoot the teacher. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens. Mm-hmm. So our sons will imitate the white boy and then everything happens. Yeah. And all the you have to fall. tell your son to control his mouth. Emotional Mm -hmm. discipline is a serious weakness of black boys in public school. Mm -hmm. Our sons don't have emotional discipline. Watch what you say out your mouth. Mm -hmm. It can get you locked up. It can get you put out of school. Teach your sons to keep their mouths shut when they are angry. Yes. I tell my boys all the time. I have two. And I tell them all the time. If you do something and a white child does the same exact thing, your punishment, your penalties are so far greater. That person may not even have a punishment, but yours is going to be severe just because of the skin that you're in. So I think that, you know, even when my 20 year old is out driving, I have to constantly remind him, be cautious. You know, whatever they ask you to do in that moment, just comply because the rules for you, unfortunately, are different in life. And my dear, beautiful African sisters, my mothers, 
I'm going to put some of this on y'all. Okay. More so than the father. I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. Whether the father is in the home or not in the home, of course, in the case of you three ladies, he's in the home. The problem is black mothers don't prepare their sons or daughters, but we're talking about sons, don't prepare them well for dealing with racism because y'all don't discipline well. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't discipline your sons well. And what I mean by that is y'all give them too many chances. Mm-hmm. Y'all do too much threats without following up with no real consequence. Mm-hmm. Too much yelling, too much pleading, too much negotiating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. White supremacy don't plead with black kids. They don't right. negotiate. They Not don't beg. They true. lock them up and they kill them. That's true. Yeah. You have to get more discipline in your home if you want your son to be more disciplined in the school. Because what happens is I get to talk back to mommy five times Mm -hmm. before there's a punishment. I get to yell at my mom twice before there's a punishment. That white teacher isn't going to allow me to yell at her a single time. Mm -hmm. So you are socializing your son to think he's allowed to do in school what he does in his home. Mm -hmm. And when he gets to school and realizes he don't get a second chance mm-hmm. or a third no. chance or a fourth chance right. when his mama gives him 50 chances, it confuses him yeah. because he's like, wait a minute, my mama let me do this and I get away mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. This ain't your mother. Not only is she not your mother, she represents the white power structure, your enemy. Mm-hmm. You have to teach discipline because black boys are destroyed for a lack of discipline more than anything else in this society. Go to any prison. Yeah. Go to any prison. I promise you, discipline will be related to the reason they were incarcerated directly or indirectly. Mm-hmm. Sexual discipline, emotional discipline, mm-hmm. financial discipline, mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, economic discipline. It's all discipline. We got to make sure our sons have discipline if they're going to survive this racist society. Wow. So if you could maybe describe the rollout of your school that is going to be opening soon. Um, Mm -hmm. I know that right now it's going to start off as an all male school, but could you tell us some of the benefits and some of the programs that you're going to have at the school that will empower these young men? Well, in addition to science, language, social studies and math, Our six core curriculums on top of those, because those are your academic, we're going to have nutritional and dietary, agricultural and agronomical, political and military, Mm -hmm. financial and economic, Mm -hmm. science of the black man, woman and child, and spiritual and astrological science. Those will be the six on top. So that's 10 different curricula when you add the four majors in. Wow. Sounds very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. We are a leadership school. And although a lot of schools Mm -hmm. have that word leadership in Mm -hmm. their title, Mm -hmm. they don't take it seriously. Gotcha. We do. We are about producing black men who can go to any black community in the world Mm -hmm. and build up and organize those people towards creating their own political economic reality. We want global leaders. We are training and raising and forging global leaders, real black men for real black problems. So for the student that has the learning disability, um, how Mm -hmm. will that be addressed at um, at G? Well, first of all, as a master school psychologist, Mm -hmm. what you think is a learning disability, I don't necessarily think is so. Correct. So number yes. one, I would have to, th- those young men would have to be screened mm-hmm. to see if they really had a learning disability. Mm-hmm. Correct. Because I can almost guarantee you, if I come to Prince George's County or Baltimore County or Caroline County or any of the counties in the great state of Maryland from which my paternal ancestors hail, I can almost guarantee you 80% of the black boys with learning disabilities don't have them. Right. They have lazy disabilities. Mm-hmm. You understand? Lazy disabilities. Mm-hmm. So first we have to screen them to make sure there's really a learning problem because most of them are just lazy. That's okay. number one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number two, for children who have real disabilities, right? 
-hmm. truly autistic, Mm -hmm. truly dyslexic, truly intellectually disabled, they would not be able to make use of our school in the initial three years. I do plan to have an academy for the deaf, an academy for the blind, an academy for the autistic, and an academy for the seriously psychologically disturbed within five years of opening, but we will not have that the first three years. So the children will have to be screened to make sure there is not Mm -hmm. a serious disability there that will prevent them from maximizing or participating in the education. We will have those Mm -hmm. disabled programs. We will not begin with those disabled programs. So we need black parents to be honest. Mm -hmm. If you know for sure Mm -hmm. your child has a moderate to severe intellectual disability, you know for sure they have mm-hmm. a moderate to severe autistic disability. Because remember, you can be autistic and still mm-hmm. be in that regular classroom. Yeah, absolutely. So-called yes. ADHD, which don't even exist, but you can still be in that regular classroom. Right. So a lot of, remember, special ed is not just disability. Mm-hmm. It's disability plus need for differential instruction. Mm-hmm. If you have a disability and you don't have a need for differential instruction, you can come to FDMG the first year. Okay. Okay. So, Dr. Umar, to go back to your curriculum, I know when we heard you speak last week, you talked about college and trade school. Um, mm-hmm. So, is your is your school going to be more college prep or trade school or a combination of both? All that and more. Okay. All that and more because we're a leadership academy. So, the children will automatically be prepared for college. That goes without saying. As far as the trades go, once the Honorable Frederick Douglass High School is fully renovated, because we haven't began on that one yet, once the Frederick Douglass High School is fully renovated, we plan to have at least four of the major building trades in there. We want to have carpentry, plumbing, electric, and HVAC. That's our goal. Uh, If we only end up with two of them, I'm still happy with that. Most high schools don't have any of them. Okay. Okay. So when did you feel, and this is, I'm, I'm pivoting for one second, about the, the strength of the Black family? Do you feel that there was an, a time period where it was identifiable that it was being targeted to crumble or fall apart? Yes, uh, they began deliberately targeting the Black family in the 1970s, right after they assassinated Dr. King. they That's when they really saw the Black family as the power base. Up until the 70s, they saw the Black organization as the power base, okay. right? Mm-hmm. And then I would say from slavery until the mm-hmm. civil rights era, mm-hmm. they saw the Black church as the power base. Mm-hmm. But in the 1970s, they began seeing the Black family as the power base. And so they said, mm-hmm. okay, All these black power movements are being funded by black households. Let's destroy the household. And the first thing you got to do to destroy the household is destroy the black man's ability to provide for the household. So in 1970, they de-industrialized the inner cities. They went into Baltimore. They went into Philadelphia. They went into Richmond. They went into New York, Milwaukee, Chicago, Detroit, Little Rock. And they took out the skills that pay the bills from the high schools. Up until 1970, you could learn how to be a plumber in high school, Mm -hmm. electrician in high school, auto mechanic in high school, roofer in high school, Mm HVAC tech in high school. They Mm -hmm. took those programs out and then they also shut down the factory jobs Mm -hmm. that were in the inner city. Black people lost tens of thousands of factory jobs in the decade of the 1970s and even more in the 1980s. And Bill Clinton didn't do us any favors in the 1990s either. Mm. So once they shut down the jobs and then shut down your ability to learn the skills, that began the impoverishment of the black community. And then the CIA showed up in 1980 and Mm -hmm. dropped off the crack. Mm -hmm. The crack couldn't come until 80 because as long as you had a job, you didn't have a need for the crack. Mm. So in order to turn the black economy into a drug based economy, you had to kill jobs and job training. Mm. So 1970s was the decade of killing jobs and killing job training in the high school. 1980s, they decided, you know what? They're pretty much economically devastated. Roll the crack in. 
roll the Kraken. And when they roll the Kraken, the black man who's now unemployed mm -hmm. and feeling inferior mm -hmm. as a man because he can't take mm -hmm. care of his family. Right. Right. Yep. He's either going to smoke that crack to deal with his economic depression correct, or he's going to sell that crack to try to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Whether you smoking it or whether you selling it, you're still in possession of it and mm -hmm. being in possession of it gets you a charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here comes Bill Clinton in the 1990s with the Bill Clinton crime bill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now you go to jail. For mandatory minimum sentences. Mm -hmm. Mandatory. The judge has yeah. no discretionary power at all. Five grams of crack, mm -hmm. you're doing 20 years. Yeah. And if you come in here three strikes and you out, if you come in here three times, you'll be in jail for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You talk about the destruction of the black family. Mm -hmm. Unemployment. Mm -hmm. yep. Crack. Mass incarceration. Yeah. Need I say more? And then the 2000s come. That is George W. Bush, right? Mm -hmm. And the black community is reeling from massive unemployment. We still mm -hmm. are. Massive drug devastation. We still are. Yeah, absolutely. Massive mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. We still are. So the black community says, we got to do something about this. It's the year 2000. Mm -hmm. We in a whole new century, a whole new millennium. We got to do something about that. And George mm -hmm. Bush says, okay, this is what we're going to do. They're going to try to make the black church the power base again to deal with these new problems. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to make the black church the power base again to deal with these new problems. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to economically neutralize the black church by doing what? Creating the faith-based initiative. Faith-based FBI. F, the black church mm -hmm. became the new FBI mm -hmm. agent in the black community. George Bush made them eligible for federal grants. Unknowingly. How could he do this when the Constitution mm -hmm. clearly says there's a separation between of church, church and, and state? state. Right. Mm -hmm. But George Bush found a way to kill that. And for the oh, past 23 years, black churches have qualified for federal grants. So let me ask you a question. Name me a church in Baltimore that's, the, that's at the forefront of fighting for better schools. Name me a church in Baltimore that's at the forefront of fighting against police genocide. Mm -hmm. Name me a church in Baltimore that's at the forefront of fighting against gentrification or economic apartheid. Mm -hmm. you, can't. you can't. You can't. You know why? Because mm -hmm. every church knows if we become radical, if mm -hmm. we become activists, we're not going to get no money. Mm -hmm. So right. every black church in America, just about everyone, you have a few exceptions, have mm -hmm. sold their soul to the same devil they're claiming to keep you away from. Wow. So what, would, what is your advice on us as a race, rebuilding the black family, where can we go from here? Well, first of all, mm -hmm. you can only have a conversation about rebuilding the black family mm -hmm. with people who want to rebuild the black family. Right. Because as okay. you can see, we got so many of our brothers, they don't want to rebuild the black family. Mm -hmm. They want to build a snow bunny family. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of black women want to build a snow puppy family. Right. You understand? I got you. So... If we're talking about people who really care about the future of the black community, first of all, we all got to understand something. Mm -hmm. We are all victims of internalized racism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of us. All of us. That's, the, that's where we start from. Mm -hmm. Admit you are sick so you can heal. Mm -hmm. yeah. When somebody comes to sit on my therapy couch, you have to admit you a drug addict, admit you an alcoholic, right. admit you addicted to food, admit you got low self-esteem. Right. We can't fix a problem that we don't admit exists. Right. And yeah. that is part of the black reality. We won't even admit right. that we have been affected by slavery psychologically. We won't even admit it. We won't yeah. even admit it. Even though we're the only people who don't have a racial agenda or identity, for that matter. We're the only people who does not weaponize their money to improve this situation. We're the only people who still send our children to our enemies mm -hmm. every day to get an education, mm -hmm. although we could afford to build our own schools. Black mm -hmm. America mm -hmm. is allergic to responsibility for itself. Mm -hmm. Black America is allergic to accountability for itself. And Black America is absolutely mm -hmm. disinterested in building up its own institutions, services, and programs. We want no part 
of building up our own community, which is such a contradiction mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everywhere you go, somebody's talking Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Right. Everywhere you go, right. we celebrating yeah. Tulsa, yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. How are we going to sit around talking about Tulsa mm -hmm. or Rosewood mm -hmm. or Charleston or Wilmington, North Carolina, where we don't even want to use any of our discretionary money mm -hmm. to contribute to the fund? that will create independent black institutions. We don't have a black Wall Street nowhere in this country. Right. Mm -hmm. 50 million Africans spread across 50 states. That's a million blacks yeah. per state. Nowhere you go, and I've been everywhere, yes. nowhere you go will you find a black-owned independent school, a black-owned independent bank, a black-owned independent hospital, a black-owned independent supermarket. Nowhere in this country, although we gross $2 trillion a year, and Negroes will tell you they're not affected by internalized racism. Yeah. The, our, um, our people are the consumers. We are the persons that generate the wealth in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, how would you advise a person that is an African-American person, but no Black mm -hmm. friends, all white friends and how would you um well obviously identifying that you're sick one right. and how how would you help that type of person that only um has friends that don't look like them well number one you have to first do a history on the illness you know i would wonder did this come from their parents Mm -hmm. Because what a lot of us do as black people, you know, because being able to imitate white people is what is the definition of success in black America. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So what a lot of us do is we'll move out to a white suburb, mm -hmm. surround our black kids with a bunch of white kids. Mm -hmm. And then when they grow up and only want to be around white people, we wonder what's wrong with them. Right. But we're the ones who segregated them in the first place. We created the so number one, was this, were they socialized? Right. Yeah who only want to be around white people. Yeah. You understand? Did this come from their parents mm -hmm. or is this a new thing that they decided on their own when they got to college or high school mm -hmm. or post-college? In which case, I know it's self-hatred. Mm. I know it's self-alienation. But see, the problem with the self-alienating Negro mm -hmm. who wants to surround himself with Europeans is white people do not like black people to think that they have the privileges Right. Of white people. Absolutely, they don't. Yeah. So those black people who think that they've gotten a pass, that they're somehow going to be accepted as mm -hmm. white when they're not, they're going to get a wake up call. At they some will. One thing I can mm -hmm. count, one thing mm -hmm. yep. I can promise you about mm -hmm. racism. I can it promise you itself. about racism. Yeah. I don't care if you Oprah Winfrey, I don't care if you Jay Z. I don't care if you Tyler Perry, LeBron James, Sean Carter, Puffy Combs, and I'm just naming the billionaires, right? Okay. If you stop forgetting you're black, mm -hmm. and if you start taking liberties that are the exclusive privilege of white folks, mm -hmm. they will make it a responsibility of doing something to remind you mm -hmm. that although you got the money, Although you got the fame, although you got the status, you are not white. Yes. And they will do something to remind yes. you of that. When I was in Bermuda speaking mm -hmm. many a few years ago, I learned a story about Oprah. Mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey wanted to purchase one of the, uh, and Bermuda is mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oprah wanted to purchase a vacation home in this exclusive white community mm -hmm. on this all black island. And she was richer than everybody mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. And guess what they told me? They refused Oprah. Wow. They wow. said, we don't want you. <laughs> now, here's the richest wow. woman in the history of North America. Yes. She could not buy a house in Bermuda because the white folks said no. Why am I bringing this up? To answer your question, they don't care how much money you have. Mm -hmm. Money does not equal power. And that's the problem that black people don't understand. Mm -hmm. People with power tell the people with money what to do. Wow. If I have the choice between power and money, give me the power. Every power time. is control. Mm -hmm. Power dictates behavior. Money don't. Black people are in love with money. 
white people are in love with power. Mm. And that's why they're first class citizens and we're second class citizens. Mm. Oh, wow. You want to ask about the movie? So we were talking about the Netflix movie, You People. I don't know. Have you seen it? I saw it about two nights ago. Okay. Um. So what were your thoughts on the uh, the movie? I thought it was buffoonery. Okay. <laughs> it was absolutely buffoonery. It was a minstrel show. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I could see the propaganda right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. The whole agenda, the whole agenda... Mm -hmm is to sell white males or the possibility of a long-lasting romance with a white male to black women. Mm -hmm. That's the propaganda. Mm -hmm. And it's more so for young women and girls, more so than older black women. They want to, this is part of this destruction of the black family that we've been talking uh -huh. about. Right. Same, mm -hmm. it ain't changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Getting rid of the job, right. dropping off the crack, right. locking up the men, pushing the feminism, mm -hmm. pushing yes. the transgenderism. Yes. All of this yes. is part of it. And this particular agenda here, the Meghan Markle phenomenon, is right. to sell the white man right. to the black woman. Mm -hmm. To make the black woman quit the black man. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. to abandon... They want the black woman to mm -hmm. cancel the black man. Mm -hmm. Cancel him out of your life for good. There's a white man waiting for you. The only problem with that narrative, white men are not in a rush to marry black women. Not at all. They are in a rush to sleep with black yes, women. Yes, the curiosity of They it. are not in a rush to marry. Are there white mm -hmm. men who marry black women? Of course there are. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. But do they suffer? Mm -hmm. A chocolate bunny crisis, the way the black man suffers a right. snow bunny no, crisis? Not Hell all. no. <laughs> right. It's not even close. Right. I'll give you this. Like I've said before, mm -hmm. the only white women that the black man can have are the white women other white men don't want. Absolutely. Right. And the only white men that the black women can have mm -hmm. are the white women that other white women don't want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the black woman gets the leftovers, the black man gets the leftovers, but we're so in love with the color of their flesh, mm -hmm. or should I say the lack thereof, mm -hmm. that we don't even step back long enough to study yeah. the social phenomena that are at play here. So do you think you that a interracial couple can really be successful? Do you think that they that relationship can last? I feel personally, I feel like Someone has a to die. A white person and a yes. black person can have a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. Slavery was a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. right. We worked for free and white people got all the and benefits. They benefited. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You see that? Yes. But it only worked because what? We were second class citizens yes. and they were first class citizens. Mm -hmm. In other words, when the black woman mm -hmm. marries the white man, Mm -hmm. As long as she accepts her subservient position, right. the marriage will be fine. Yeah. Black man marries a white woman. As long as he accepts his subservient position, the relationship will be fine. So can they coexist? Of course, we coexist with white people every day. You know why? Because black people have accepted our subservient positions as second class citizens in this country. So You can only coexist with the white man being his number two. Mm. You cannot coexist with him being mm -hmm. equal. Why? Because black power is a contradiction of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. White supremacy cannot allow black power. That is a contradiction. Mm -hmm. White privilege dictates that they have the advantage. Mm -hmm. And that's why Even I often in marriage. say when I, do my, when I do my lessons on racism, mm -hmm. one of the first rules of racism, all white people are racist. Second rule of racism, they don't share power with blacks. Third mm -hmm. rule of racism, they are ruthless. They will do anything and everything to protect power. We have no idea. Look at what they're doing with COVID. Reducing your numbers. Mm -hmm. Anything they got to do to protect power. So yes, these relationships can coexist. But here's the bigger question, my sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bigger question is, because I'm a, I'm a pragmatist. Okay. I am a political pragmatist, a pan-African pragmatist, which means what? Any question you ask me, I'm going to ask it back mm -hmm. by saying, how does this benefit the Black community? Mm -hmm. Black man, white woman, how does that benefit us? Black woman, white man, how does that benefit us? It does. Anything you ask me, I'm going to ask myself, 
and ask you, where is the benefit of mm -hmm. this uh -huh. to the black community? Mm -hmm. no. An interracial marriage has no benefit at all no. for the black community. Not at all. Not at all. So what did you feel about the analogy that black people and white people will never be cool because the white people are the man is the man who cheated and the black people is the chick that can't get over it? What did you what now, did you feel about that? It's not because of the history. Yes. Uh-huh. It's not because of the history. Mm -hmm. It's because of the present. White gotcha. people uh -huh. have not stopped being the people they were 400 years ago. Years ago. All right. The right. white man today, he is the same the white same, man yeah. that right. enslaved you. The right. same right. white man right. that lynched you. The mm -hmm. same white man that castrated you. They have not changed their gotcha. opinion or their collective consciousness about African people at all. So what the movie tries to do is mm -hmm. present a narrative that black people stuck in the past. Okay, they can't right. get over the wrongdoing and move on. Uh-uh. It ain't about the past. It's right. about the past, the present, and what y'all planning in the future. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the things that I dislike the most about the movie, two things, and there were many, mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy's character. Mm -hmm. White media always has to misrepresent the masculine, black conscious, unapologetically African black yes. male as a rambling racist. Yes, yes. An emotionally uncontrolled animal. Mm -hmm. Angry. Who is actually a greater threat to peace and harmony mm -hmm. than the white man who caused all the problems we have in this country. Mm -hmm. That's, That's number one. Mm -hmm. They made Eddie Murphy's character to be an outright fool and a demagogue. Mm -hmm. They always do that with black consciousness. That's mm -hmm. how they dismiss the whole argument of mm -hmm. black consciousness by making those who have it. Killmonger and Black Panther was another example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Killmonger's character in Black Panther was another example. We're going to make the intelligent, mm -hmm. conscious Black nationalist mm -hmm. a raving hater of whites, yes. an obnoxious egomaniac mm -hmm. who can't even listen to sound reasoning right. from members of his own race. Right. Absolutely. And they also like to make them a sexist as well. So they love to turn black women away from strong black conscious alpha males. Mm -hmm. The Eddie mm -hmm. Murphy character, mm -hmm. the Killmonger character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number two, the white man is always the mm -hmm. benevolent humanitarian. Right. Mm -hmm. If you notice the white guy who she's supposed to marry, he was the sweetest, humblest, <laughs> nicest, most understanding. He went out of his way to understand his father-in-law. Right. He went yeah. out of his way <laughs> right. to understand his mother. He never got angry. He was never racist. Yeah. He was like a white Jesus. He even went to the barbershop. <laughs> he even went to the barbershop. Right. See that? <laughs> right. See that? The black man is the enemy. The white man is your friend. Is the savior. Mm -hmm. They crucified the image of the black man in that movie. And they deified the image of the white man. Mm. Wow. Selling the white man to the black woman. Destruction of the black family. Cancel the black man. You don't need him. There's a there's a fat white man out there waiting for all of you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, so uh so in your in your school, you talked about you want natural teachers. You want your teachers to be all natural. I think that would help, that helps the black kid find beauty mm -hmm. and each other. Um, can you speak a little bit about that quickly? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey mm -hmm. said, don't take the naps out of your hair, take mm -hmm. them out of your mind. Yeah. Um, black women are scandalized the most mm -hmm. over the popular images of what is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We can say this because you all spend more money on hair care products mm -hmm. than all other women in America put together. Yeah. You spend more money on beauty products than all other women in America put together. So the black woman clearly has insecurities around beauty. Mm -hmm. 
and I would argue a preoccupation with beauty. Okay. The black man is scandalized around his economic ability to take care of his family. Mm -hmm. So whereas with the women, it's all about how, how attractive are you? With the black man, it's about how responsible are you? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so at FDMG, it's important for me to destroy the black woman and the black girl in particular's psychosis mm -hmm. that she has to look like a white woman in order to be beautiful. Okay. Before I can teach a black girl anything, I got to teach her to love herself. Okay. If a if a girl, if a young princess comes through FDMG, mm -hmm. the Anna Douglas and Amy Garvey Academy of mm -hmm. FDMG, and she don't love her natural self, mm -hmm. then she was miseducated. I have to take responsibility gotcha. for that. Gotcha. I have to raise princesses who are so self-confident mm -hmm. that if they walk down the street and a mm -hmm. black man calls them ugly, they would smile and keep on going. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that if we don't see God, I would argue that one of the most important jobs of a school is to teach black children to see God when they see themselves. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I think Nishambia had a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because last week when we heard you, when we when we listened to your lecture, you mentioned that in order to work at the school, to chaperone the field trips that the staff and the adults have to be natural as well. Is that correct? Like they have Absolutely. their natural state. Absolutely. Okay. So Nishambi had questions. Her question was, could she work at the school with her light hair color? Her hair is Absolutely. natural. It's, what, <laughs> her hair blonde? is natural. No, no, no. Yeah. Not what? naturally blonde, but it's not, it's no, it's no perm. It's, it's just. It's, it's all mine. Um, <laughs> it is natural. It's just not today. If it's um, natural, yeah. you good. Okay. Okay. But that includes <laughs> hair color. And we that includes the color. straightening comb too. Okay. 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 Gotcha. So one last question, or just for clarity purposes, you mentioned beauty and insecurities. Mm -hmm. Does the woman have to be insecure to want to look a certain way? Not at all, but she has to be insecure to spend $30 billion a year to look a certain way when her daughters don't have independent schools they can attend. Very true. Okay. Very true. Okay. Very true. Point and, taken. And we thank you for being the one black man trying to make the independent school happen for our black sons. I wish oh, yes. my son is a little too late for the school. I I was hoping that it it's would never come too in time. Late because it's never too late. He did programs. say that. So it's never would be... too late. We're okay. going to have men's programs. So whether he's 21 or 25, Absolutely. there's going to be something for everybody at FDMG, including the women. Yeah, I was just about to ask. Even when before the, girls, the girls' academy opens up, mm -hmm. we will be having programs for women. So some of the conferences we're going to be having, we're going to be having the uh, conscious singles convention. Mm -hmm. So this is for conscious oh, people who are That's single okay. and they're looking for a suitable conscious mate. Mm -hmm. I love we that. will be having the conscious singles convention. We will also have the conscious couples convention. Those who are that. already married, like yourselves, mm -hmm. of course, y'all gonna have to do something with the hair, ladies. Uh, <laughs> You can't come to the conscious conventions. <laughs> my hair is natural. All I need to do is add some water to it. All if I it need ain't to nappy, do... I'm not happy. <laughs> no. okay. I think we're all we natural, also, though. We're all natural. natural. We are, yes, we are. No chemicals. It's no not from a little hair color. Um, yeah, and we have girls. Um, and our girls and they're are all natural. natural. Yes. Yes. Everybody's natural, yes. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. And so we're going to have ex-offenders conference. We're going to have one of the ones I'm really looking forward to, because nobody has done this yet, mm -hmm. a black cosmetics conference. And mm -hmm. what this is, tell us any black person who makes their own cosmetics, okay. yeah, yourself. So you got your own shea butter with your mm -hmm. own stuff. Yeah. You got your own hair pomade. Yes. You got your own body oil. And I got this idea. Because I speak so much around the world. Mm -hmm. And guess what's the one thing I'm always getting at a lecture? Shea butter. Cosme. Here's some shea butter for you. <laughs> right. some man's right. And you know what? Right, right. Black people are so creative. Right. All the bottles of shea butter and almond butter and cocoa butter yeah. and body butter and hair right. butter and it's beard oil, no two have been the same. Yeah. Wow. Okay. No two. <laughs> so here's what I want to do. I want to bring all the black cosmetic engineers together mm -hmm. 
So black people can come to one place Mm -hmm. and buy Mm -hmm. black cosmetics that are 100% made exclusively by black people with your own hands, Mm -hmm. right? Your own formula. It Mm -hmm. must be you, but not from Uh no China, no Asian, no nothing from scratch. And it is your label. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a competition. Who got the best beard oil? Mm -hmm. Who got the best shea butter? Mm -hmm. Who got the best body butter? Yes. Okay. Who got the best bath crystals? Yes. You follow me? I really want to do that. I really want to showcase our cosmetologists mm-hmm. because I think if we do that, we can cut down on all this money we give into the Korean I beauty agree. care industry. I agree. I agree. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we um, definitely going to yes. do that. We're going to have fashion shows. Yes. I mean, it's going to be a school by day, ladies, but yes. by night, it's going to be a black community organizing headquarters yeah. like this everything you can think of we're going to be doing and because we own the school we don't have to turn the lights off at no point it's our property can nobody kick us out mm-hmm. yeah. we ain't got to watch what yes. we say because we own it yeah yes you know yeah. and it's very few places you can go in this country yeah and organize black people and talk black talk Without somebody being offended, offended or afraid. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's what we have at FDMG. Yes. Awesome. We love it. We love your vision. Um, we support you. And we thank you for coming on to the Pretty Out podcast. Now, before you go, Dr. Not Lamar, a problem. I appreciate people, where, you, ladies. Where can donate. people donate to the Frederick Douglass uh, Marcus Where can Starby people Academy? donate? Yes. Uh, cash app, dollar sign FDMG school on the cash app. Okay. Again, that's dollar sign FD. MG School on the Cash App. Also, PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. If they want to mail the check of money order, make that payable to FDMG Academy. It is tax exempt. And that can go to P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware. P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. That information is also on my website, drumarjohnson.com. They can also text message me, especially parents who have issues with their children. If you need a consultation, feel free to reach out and you can text message me to schedule 215-989-9858. Consultations for, or should I say, evaluation reviews for children who are classified as intellectually disabled are free. You don't have to pay for that. So if your child was evaluated by public school, charter school, Mm -hmm. outside psychologists, and determined to be intellectually disabled, all you have to do Mm -hmm. is email or WhatsApp Dr. Umar that psychological evaluation. I will review it. Mm -hmm. Make sure you leave your number. I will call you back or I will respond through email and tell you whether or not I think that was a misdiagnosis or not. Black children are four times as likely as white kids to be called retarded when they are not. So do not accept the words of the psychologist Mm -hmm. and the special ed team. You have Dr. Umar who will look at the report for free Mm -hmm. if the diagnosis is intellectual disability. So there's no excuses. Mm -hmm. And again, that number is 215-989-9858. And just also, if you want to work at the school, Send your resume to fdmgresumes at gmail.com, F-D-M-G-R-E-S-U-M-E-S, fdmgresumes at gmail. You must have a photo and you must have a cover letter along with the resume. So three documents should be attached. Your cover letter should simply tell me who you are Mm -hmm. and why do you want an opportunity to work at the school? Who are you? Mm -hmm. And why should you be given an opportunity to work here? That's the cover letter. For my ladies, if you're not natural at the time you submit your resume, that's perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. As long as you're natural when you show up for the first day of work. Okay. 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 First day of work. Um, Natural. Okay. Tell us about the open house. Uh, The open house. You're speaking of the grand opening. The grand opening. opening. Yes. Okay. I wanted to do it February the 25th. Mm -hmm. That's when I wanted to do it. But I was under the assumption that the HVAC team will be working every day. And I learned last week that they'll only, they'll only be coming in one day a week. Oh, no. So whereas I just knew we was going to be good for February the 25th, we're going to push it back. So I'm looking at 
a day in April. We're going to wait okay. till the weather break. Okay. Because well, you got March. Ain't no yeah. need to do it in March when you could do it in April. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and do it in April. It's going to be for the whole community. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell everybody, make sure you donate because if you yes. didn't donate, you won't be allowed in. We got it. We got it. Uh, so make sure you hit the cash app, hit the PayPal, send a check of money order. I just picked up 20 checks yesterday. Thank you mm -hmm. to those folks who mailed in the donation checks. Mm -hmm. And to also let your um, audience know that Baltimore, Maryland will be a bus stop city yes. for FDMG. So I haven't decided where. It might be Empowerment Temple, mm -hmm. but I'm Definitely. going to choose a convenient location so the bus can get right on 95 North mm -hmm. and get right on up to the school. Okay. Okay. But we will be bringing the bus from Baltimore, mm -hmm. second, third, and fourth grade every day to it. FDMG Academy. So I do want my Baltimore family to know mm -hmm. that if you have a second, third, or fourth grader, a child who will be second, third, or fourth grade mm -hmm. in summer of 2024, next year. Okay. So right now they're probably in kindergarten. Gotcha. Right. Mm -hmm. They'll be ready for second or they're in first grade. They'll be ready for third or gotcha. they're in second grade and they'll be ready for fourth. OK, they can take the bus on mm -hmm. up to FDMG every day. So Baltimore will get a bus. Eastern Shore, Maryland will get a bus. Okay. Philadelphia and Chester will get a bus. Trenton and Camden, New Jersey will get a bus. And then Dover and Wilmington will also uh, get a bus. And for your listeners who live around the country, just for the benefit of the conversation, mm -hmm. I'll be in Jackson, Mississippi on Friday for the water crisis rally in March. I'll be in Las Vegas on the 18th, Dover, Delaware on the 24th, Delaware State University, Patterson, New Jersey on the 25th, Newark, New Jersey on the 26th, Lansing, Michigan, March 18th, Wilmington, North Carolina, March 20th, Terre Haute, Indiana, March 23rd, Willingboro, New Jersey, March 25th, Philadelphia, March 26th, Memphis, Wow. April 4, Pittsburgh, April 8, Island of Carousel, April 10, Republic of Suriname, South America, April 14, Pleasantville, New Jersey, April 21, St. Louis, April 29, West Africa, Senegal, May 5th, Martinique in the Caribbean, May 18, Cincinnati, May 21, South Africa, May 22, Aruba, May 28, wow. Southampton, Virginia, Juneteenth, Louisville, Kentucky, Juneteenth, Jamaica, June the 24th, and of course, Nat Turner Land on my birthday. August the 21st. Oh, I love oh, it. Oh, wow. And before we go, please grab a copy of The Black Parent Advocate. There's a lot of good information, a lot of resources for the parents out here. Here's a copy right here. Um, anything we want to say to wrap up? Get your copy. They yes. can order it on my website, mm -hmm. drumarjohnson.com. I have my copy. And we will ship it right on out. You need this. These are the yes. letters you need. To make the school back up off you. Yes, absolutely. Sure. I'm very proud of this book. Very proud you of this book. Be. You, you should, should be. You should be. Thank you. And I so am much. working on my for sisters only book, which should have been done. Ladies, I'm sorry. Saving the kids is more important. Building the oh, school no, is more absolutely, important. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely. But I do want to get my for sisters only relationships and dating book, The Rules to Romance. Mm. I can't wait to get that done because that's going to mm. be one heaven of a tour. When Absolutely. I go around the country doing my for sisters Absolutely. only seminar. So we can't wait to have you back so you can tell us all about the book. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Y'all going to love it. It's going to be stuff in there, not just for single women, mm -hmm. married women as well. Awesome. Good. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks again for coming on to the Pretty Out podcast. And yes. we will see you at the grand opening. Yes, ma'am. Be blessed, ladies. All right. You, you too. as well. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.